This is from 1941. Guten Morgen. Today, we are going to do something super cool. First of all, I'm going to take you to my shelf. What do you call these things? Cupboard. Okay, this is the messiest locker or whatever that word is in the world. But I'm going to pull something out here. Putting our brand on a piece of clothing that's not beanies has been something that scares me. Since the beanies are both handmade and so infused with Norwegian heritage, I wouldn't want our logo to go on anything that doesn't have at least some character of its own. The answer was found in my dad's closet, and it provided both the personal and the Nordic history that I need. Actually more history than I at first thought. So this is a Swedish military uniform from the Second World War. My dad, as you know, the motorcycle guy, if you watched any of our earlier videos. So if you saw the film, here's the famous, the famous Norwegian movie star, old Carl, the old version of the young Carl. And here he's walking the teeniest dog you have ever seen in the rain. Do you have something to say to the fans? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> he bought this as sort of a, 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 a moped uniform when he was driving around with his moped club, in, uh, driving his veteran moped. He wanted something sort of local and sort of wooly, though this is not wool, it's uh, vadmel. Okay, uh, past Benjamin, if you would have taken your time to research, you would realize that vadmel translates to wadmel, and it's actually wool. So it's wool which suits our brand really well. Okay, let's get back to it. Uh, but that's it, you could buy these like uh, from the army reserves. There are plenty of those. And I'm gonna show you a little extra little detail here now. This is from 1941. Uh, I'll see, see if I can find out what the number 100 means. If you look at the buttons, the three crowns, that's the national symbol of uh, Sweden. And then there's a very nice embroidered emblem right here. Little original uh, label that says Kaboom for some reason. So, pretty cool, sturdy uniform from Second World War. But what does that have to do with caps? I was researching around the internet for somebody who uh, hand makes caps. And then I stumbled upon the best thing I could possibly stumble on. And it just happens that this very weekend that we, we were just chatting through the budget and all the details, he is visiting Stockholm. So probably I'm going to meet him. I'll see if I can get some proof if I met him in Stockholm and hand over this stuff. Here we are. <laughs> we're meeting, hello. This is real, <laughs> it's happening in real life. Look at all these caps. That, that's the wrong cap, by the way. <laughs> Look at all these handmade caps. That's so cool. What was this again? Was this a, a curtain? <laughs> yeah, it was a curtain. <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. And you were from? Vilnius. Lithuania. Vilnius. Lithuania. Yeah. Lithuania. That's awesome. Cool. I just wanted proof that we actually met for the rest of the video. <laughs> It's kind of fun to have. No one knows actually how it looks because I never post like yeah. uh, myself. Uh. So we handed over the World War II uniform and the process was on. Along with the uniform I got hold of a few work jackets from the Norwegian military and navy. I am incredibly happy with the attention to detail we were able to provide. Every rivet is brushed metal, suiting the material. Same for the adjustment locks. Even the adjustment straps are made from the jackets and pants. And, for proudly displaying who made the caps for us, Mindaugas even got it embroidered with our own typeface, which I also have made myself. So it's handcrafted and storied as much as we could possibly manage. All in all, we made a variety of 5-panel and 6-panel caps, in 3 different colors and materials. We also added some of the flags and embroidery from the original uniforms on some of the caps. The gun emblem from the World War II uniform, and the Norwegian flags from the work jackets. 
but there are also plain versions without the emblems. And as a bonus, I saved the three crowns buttons off the Swedish uniform. So if you buy a grey wool cap from this first batch, you get one of those in the package. Production of Bernard caps. These images are <laughs> copyrighted. Okay, that's enough. The caps are available in the store now, as long as they last. And if you really love them, let us know so we can make new batches in the future. If you love handcrafted stuff, and if you're slightly interested in Norway and Scandinavia too, you should definitely follow us and do the bell icon and everything. But don't go quite yet. Here we go into the bonus material. And you see how this leather strap is broken. Uh, and there's a little... Uh, what you call this? Security needle? That's what we call them in Norway at least. After stealing this uniform from my dad's closet a long time ago, I was using these pants actively during winter. One morning the leather strap broke. I looked for a security needle and complained to my mother-in-law, whom we were hosting at the time, that I couldn't find one. Then we went to the subway, going into Stockholm city, and I sit down, and lo and behold, right between my legs, on the floor, is a security needle. I put it on the pant leg and moved on with my day. That's what I call a modern day miracle. Buy your miracle pants caps, available today in a Red Hat factory store near you. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go now.